So the reason why all death is suicide is because mindfulness plays a big factor in people's experience. So oftentimes, just like I tell you, you're a creator creating a manifesto manifesting. Oftentimes people have these thoughts that they don't share with you. They don't share with nobody. Like this person could be up in your house right now having these suicidal thoughts or having this fear of death, having this fear of um, catching a, or uh, attracting a, a, um, a sickness or disease, watching the news, regurgitating it, it gets past um, the subconscious. And believe it or not, we create our own demise. We destroy ourselves with our fear. We go to the path of least resistance for us and sometimes the path of least wow you're right yeah seriously and so sometimes the path of least resistance for us is death i'm gonna give you some examples like even though we're talking about health and wellness i want you to understand how important your mind is so for example a person who okay let's say they mama or they a loved one or somebody died of pre breast cancer person that died of breast cancer when and they were young, they were a little girl or a little boy, they have that thought, they have that memory, and they might have a fear of getting um, cancer. Men could have breast cancer, so yeah, a man or a woman. So anyway, so when they grow older, now because of that thought or that fear, now this woman, she'll go and get mammograms on time, all the time because she had a fear. She wanted to take care of her breasts. She's doing a little self-examination and everything like, right? She wants to take care of her breasts. And lo and behold, one day she feels something. She had the fear as a little girl. She, she was trying to do or go and get the mammograms which magnify that fear because anything that you give your attention to energetically you're conjuring up more energy for it then she found the lump that made her extra extra fearful and lo and behold she's a manifesto manifesting she manifested breast cancer because she thought about it all her life she got x-rays on it she wanted to see she wanted you know Tell, the doctor who had to tell her everything was everything was setting her up to getting more of that because the subconscious mind the blessings of God are yea and amen and it goes according to how you feel the things that you're thinking about that's why it's in the biblical text finally my brother whatsoever things that are lovely whatsoever things that are pure whatsoever things that are good report if there be any virtue in them think on these things so this is why we're not supposed to be having all of them chaotic thoughts going through while or not because we're master manifestors right and so now she didn't manifest the cancer. She has it, right? Even in, the, even in the biblical text, they'll tell you, you know, I think it was Job. He was like, that which I have feared the most has come upon me. One of them, one of them books say that. <laughs> anyway, because fear attracts too. So sick people attract at their sick state of being. They attract abundance of sickness, more sickness. That's why it's so important that that's why I teach about taking care of your gut or whatever and mindfulness so much. And I'm trying to teach you how important it is to clear up your gut, because if you clear up your gut, you can clear out of some of them toxic thinkings I and mean, thoughts that you will be having too. So here we go with this lady. She have the cancer now and now she's afraid of it spreading. So of course she's going to listen to what the doctor saying. The doctor say, let's do chemo or whatever. So she was already ascetic in her physical reality with acids taking over her body because that's how that's what all that um says that your body is ascetic you got to get more to the alkaline range but she decides to go and do the chemo which is more acids that they got to put in her body the doctor's way of healing will be give the body that's already ascetic more acid to see if it'll come back to life that's how they think about healing i teach you to get on the alkaline side and for your blood type anyway she do that she go to you know chemo and whatever and she still in her mind remembers mama going through this here afraid of dying for this here and she has all this fear now she didn't con conjure up a whole lifestyle of fear right and then now she's wondered if the can you know if the if the chemo work she's still 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 in the fearful place of being but the path of least resistance for her because of her thoughts her, let's say she 40 because of her 30 years because she maybe she when she was um 10 years old that's when her mama died her 30 years of conjuring up fear for cancer of dying for cancer now the path of least resistance for her is death 
is to she's running away she's running away and so the path of least resistance is death so all death is really suicide the path that's going to make her feel better is death because she's suffering now all deaths are suicide it's a thought that that person was thinking and most often it is a thought of fear that this person was thinking right or if they're old and they just died of what they call natural causes it's a thought of just peace just rest just relaxing just okay i've done everything that i needed to do here what's next for me we are always creating we created when we will come forth who we going to come forth with our mother or our father our trauma we created that so that we could manipulate energy to realize that we are master manifestors and we also create our death oh death where's our sting oh grave where's thy victory all of this is, is indication of that you didn't take my life i laid it down and if i can lay it down that means i can pick it back up again because you got to realize we're energy we're energy frequency and vibration that's it energy is neither created nor destroyed it simply transforms <laughs> so i know some of y'all in church you don't even believe that but energetically that's what we all doing here some of y'all funny here. so if you have the meal plan on page one and two uh devian kid on page one and two your meal plan for your blood type the link is in my bio if you go there and pay attention to page one and two you'll have everything that you could eat for your negative um blood type but keep in mind it's not rh negative it's a a b so you have to know whether you're a what's your negative B, uh, O, or A, B. And when you know that information, you select yours, and then you don't have to wait on me to um, start talking because I'm actually not going to call out that list because there are people on here that are um, want, wanting more information and they already have theirs. And that wouldn't be fair to them. So I'll say this to you and whoever else to say that says something like that. Just tell me what I'm supposed to eat. No, I'm going to show you where you're supposed to go. Let me show you where you're supposed to go. And then we'll... Don't you forget to pick up your... Ooh -ooh. All right. I'm trying to get to my... Okay, here we go. So, link in my bio. This is at the top, my bio, the picture of me at the top. This is my home page, my main page. So, this is what we call a bio here on TikTok. You just click on my picture to get there. In it, you'll see my link. This here bolded um, website it says www.saltoftheearthpub.org. When you see that link, you just press it. You just click on it one time, and it's gonna bring you to my website. My um, my internet so today. I I'm running out of um space or data. What they call it. And so it's, it's slow but you click on that link and when you get there you're going to be looking at the third bundle that pops up this here here this black line right here the third one the third bundle gonna give you everything that you need the uh, the full blood type bundle kit it comes with your weight loss cheat codes it comes with a herbal potion it comes with a meal plan it comes with your highly beneficial food list everything you need right there but you gotta make sure that you put in your blood type. You see there? And I don't have negative sitting there. You gotta know if you're A, B, A, B, um, A, B, A, B, or O. You put that in a card and you add to cart. I ain't finished yet. Don't forget to put the right email address. Make sure you're selecting the right one because this is no refunds. This is downloadable. If you, if you, cause the people were emailing me about this here, <laughs> if you get the meal plan automatically you select the wrong one but you got the wrong one and there's no refunds uh, you're gonna have to buy the right one i can't help you with that you know and you know i know mistakes happen but then there are also people there are a lot of people out there that 
that be trying to get over like that. So I can't help you with that. So make sure you put in the right one in the card. Make sure you put in the correct email address. Now I can help you with that. If you put in the wrong email address, I can send you the link that way. I'll do that for you. But there are people out there that are just like, oh, I clicked the wrong one. I got B. Well, send me O2. What? No. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you do it. Serenity, hello, lady. You had some snapper last night? Good for you, baby. Good for you. I'm hopeful that was good for your blood type. All right. So now we have um, people that's trying to come live, and I'm wondering, who are you? I don't know you. What are we talking about? Like, I, I don't know you, and I, wanna, I don't want to be interrupted to play a game because they, they got the game people out there. So tell me what you're talking about wanting to go live for with me, and you never even, you know, I never even saw your name before. Okay? So that's how you get to your meal plan. On my website, I have the highly beneficial food list. I have a power within transformation course that's how to videos how to grocery shop how to clean your organs how to detox things like that 18 of them from 10 years worth the research my herbalist journey my journey under, sitting underneath my guru who taught me everything that i know today i also offer um, personal consultations i do mentorship and it'd be about lucid dreaming you know sometimes it'll be about health and wellness It'll be about relationships, how a manifestation, my consultations, oh, you name it, mind, body, soul, we talk about it all. I have a detox uh, called Sustained Detox that's available for those who haven't had a detox in a while and they know. When you need a detox, you know, because you feel sluggish, you feel maybe itchy, crawling sensations or a plethora of maybe parasites. You feel bloating, you feel mental fatigue, you maybe have fluid filled bumps, maybe you have eczema, or psoriasis, things like that. Really, really bad, bad dandruff. Things like that is letting you know that you need a detox because your lymphatic system, which is a backup to your blood system, it could only take so much. And if it's not eliminated, if eliminating, then you get things like high blood pressure, then you get things like diabetes, autoimmune disease, all because your body is not eliminating and absorbing minerals properly. Well, absorbing minerals and eliminating waste properly. You could end up having to wear glasses because of this too. Because if it's cloudy up in here, if you don't have an ability for this brain to see because of the toxic state it's in, trust and believe it's gonna be cloudy with these eyes, cloudy in your head. And that explains like old timers and that Parkinson thing Parkinson disease thing, you know, they got so many different man-made names to this, but all of this here starts in the gut. You clean up your gut and you clean up your life. How do I know this? Because <laughs> I tapped into my inner being and my inner being helped me to begin to eat for my blood type, um, but not to me at the time. I was just tapping into spiritually my inner being and letting my inner being guide me on this journey. And then I ended up being able to see and heal my body from all sicknesses and diseases that I had. My hair used to thin out. This is why my size or um or um low right now because I had permed hair. But maybe my hair was about this year length before I shaved it all off. And I shaved it all off because the middle of my hair was thinning and out. It ain't thinning and out no more, right? It's full and real, real thick now. But the middle of my hair was thinning and out. I had a knee, I was anemic. I had low blood pressure. I had vertigo, I had thyroid issues, I wore glasses, I used to have cystic acne, fluid filled bumps, whatever you want to call that, hormonal issues. It was hard for me to breathe, I had a lot of mucus on my chest, I couldn't gain, I couldn't lose weight because of thyroid issues. I experienced a lot of sickness and disease. Everybody want to come live today. Hey Seth Duty, hey babe, what are we talking about today? And so I experienced these things and, you know, now I'm in a better position to be able to help other people because I saved my life and I healed myself from all of those things. And you can too. And the people that think that they can't, okay, so shall it be for you. So shall it be for you because you want to stay up in your limited box of believing. Maybe you just want to keep your diet. Maybe you just want to hold on to your um, biscuits and, you know, you know, whatever it is that you want now, your Popeye's chicken or whatever. But I got to the point where I got tired and that's really what it takes. It takes you to get to the point of you being tired of being sick and freaking tired 
or it might take you getting diagnosed with a near death um sickness or disease or whatever right you know like um maybe some cancer you know the, the you know the c word maybe a stick a u on a nate straight and nate narrow you know the thyroid issue because the thyroid issue was really really something that's kind of like scared me so that straight so to speak because with that issue i couldn't lose weight i was so mentally fatigued just to talk for so long you know um so tired all the time and i had thyroid plus being anemic and so i would pass out my my thing that was the end all for me was when i used to pass out after taking a hot shower because hot showers you know stagnate your blood too and so i would take a hot shower trying to relax my body but my blood was already relaxed and stagnated with the low pressure not getting that oxygen with the, being anemic and just no nourishment being that i had a thyroid issues no iodine no life force so i would just bloop on the floor and that was scary to me i thought i was dying <clears throat> so when that began to happen i was like you know what i don't know what it is doctors ain't helping me really figure out what it is they just keep giving me medicine so i'm gonna just stop eating everything i'm gonna just start all over i'm just gonna hit open control delete and i cried i didn't know what i was doing i was afraid i felt very afraid very confused but i knew that one thing kept saying staying in my head was the simple fact that none of the doctors ever asked me you need a detox it's called sustained detox it'll be replenished on tuesday it's available on my website none of the doctors have ever asked me what i was eating and that stuck in my head like damn they never asked me what i was eating could it be that and so my inner being kept that thought on my mind and so i just cleared house and i just threw everything away and i would begin to eat fruit and i would only eat like the nasty stuff so i started off with like kale and dandelion just because it was green because it was nasty and because i had never had it before i felt like you know because it's green you know they got some chlorophyll up in there so i know i need chlorophyll so if they got chlorophyll i know they got magnesium and i could use some magnesium you know i knew little things at that time about health and wellness and so the little things i knew i expanded on it and it became my passion and i became you know i got energy again and then i was like every day if i i go to bed and i'll be like okay if i have energy tomorrow I'm gonna try da, 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 da. and every night I would go to bed on the computer or you know on my phone or whatever and I'll just be like researching I'll put in Google you know um, what herbs or whatever are good for you know thyroid issue what's good for fatigue you know natural things and I was just been studying on Google and then I, I met in the physical my guru who was actually a person at a gardening center because I was trying to do a garden he worked at the garden center and it was like this man came out of the freaking heavens because i was walking and i didn't see him at first and then he just like appeared it was so angelic how he appeared and i was i felt familiar with this man mind you i'm kind of sick and i felt familiar and comfortable with him and he gave me his, we talked at the garden center and he gave me his card and he was trying to tell me that he had a garden at his house and so I, being an introverted person, I don't go to people's houses, but that's how I'm, I'm trying to show you how comfortable I felt with him. And I went to his house and I would, from that day, I would go to his house and we would sit in a garden. I would help him in the garden and he would teach me everything in the garden, but he was a healer too. He was a shaman. And so he would teach me all kinds of different things. He's no longer in the physical, he transitioned. He went to the past that of least resistance and he used to always say i ain't coming back here no more this is it for me i ain't gonna be around too much longer he would say that he spoke that and um this man taught me a lot about energy he would tell me to call him to call him no he'll tell me he was gonna call me and then when I call him, I'll be like, you, dude, you ain't never called me. Why you didn't call? I would have came to help with the gardener. Da, da, da. He's like, I did call you. I did call you. I was like, no, you didn't. And I check my phone and I never see a message or anything from him. And one day I figured out he was calling me telepathically and was teaching me how to telepath telepathically communicate with him in an effort for me to be able to hear like my inner being, the thing that I'm telling you about that exists. We all have one. And so... <laughs> 
one day I called him and he was like, yeah, you got the message. Good job, my child. And I was like, what are you talking about? Tell me what you're saying because you lying to me. You lying. You not. You are not in my phone. Is my phone tripping? And he's like, no, I, I have the thought. I focus on you and you should pick up the thought. This is what we did before phones exist. And I need you to learn how to do this. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, so today I, I thought about you and I, I, I asked you to call me telepathically. And you called me, you know, shortly after because you heard the call. Each time I was telling you, since I met you, you were starting to call me sooner than the last time. And today is the day that you called me on the same day shortly after so congratulations my child and i was like oh okay <laughs> i didn't know i didn't understand hindsight is 2020 this man taught me so much about mentalism <laughs> mindfulness you know telepathic communication my inner being and stuff and he would sit there he's like man i'm so happy i met you you're gonna do a lot of, a lot of good work for others you're going to be a healer. I know who you are. He was just telling me he knew who I was, just like the church people was telling me they knew who I was as it pertained to a healer. But um, I really wasn't interested because at that moment, I was trying to get myself healed. Anyway, long story short, he had a big old key lime drink. And I would be crying about whatever because I was a crybaby back then. Boy, I used to cry about everything. I would be crying about whatever. And he'd be like, would you like a key lime and I would be, I would get mad. I'm like, no, dude, I don't want no dirt key lime. Why are you offering me a key lime? And I'm telling you, da 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 da. He was like, ain't nothing wrong with you. I was like, yeah, because the doctor said da 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 and da da da. And I, he said, ain't nothing wrong with you. You just fine. You perfect. It's your heart. Just open up your heart. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? It's like when you open up your heart, everything, you're gonna heal everything. The thyroid, and then he read me. The thyroid issues gonna go away. The vertigo go go away. This man read me. And I was like sitting up there, like, how did you know all of that? You know? Because I was telling him some things, but you know how you tell people some things about you, you don't want to tell me everything. I ain't telling him everything. And so he taught me so much about chakras, my heart, about how love heals all, you know, and in them darn key lines. Anyway, so one day, to close this here story, one day he called me telepathically and I was on it. Boy, I was, boy, I was hearing, you know, I had ears then, I was hearing. But my business, at this time I got healed and my business was rolling. I had orders and stuff. I was like, I sent him a message telepathically, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you. And then I sat down later on that day and I, I called him on the telephone in the physical and um, he didn't answer and my business was booming for me. So maybe about three days later, I thought about him. I was like, dang, he didn't answer. And I called him again and I sent a telepathic communication to him saying, I called you. But I would hear him calling for me and I'm like, wait, wait, hold up. Did he change his number? So I went to Facebook. I went to Facebook because I was like, oh, he had a Facebook. He told me he had a Facebook. So let me find him on Facebook and see if I can send him one of them DM messages to tell him, you know, hey, you changed your number and or you ain't answering. I am calling you. Man, when I went over to the Facebook, they got these accounts on Facebook where you could do like a memorial of somebody like, and he was moving. He was moving on the Facebook, but it was a memorial page of him. And he was moving, his body was, you know, it was an audio or whatever. Cause I had hurry up and clicked off because it was scary when I realized what he was. He heard, he laughed. And he had one of the biggest, loudest, fulfilling laughs. Like, oh, 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 oh. And that's what was on the memorial picture of him on Facebook. And I hurry up and I did close that goddamn computer. And I was like, I was calling you. I called you. That's what you were trying to tell me. That's what you were trying to tell me. Anyway, I boohooed. I boohooed. But the beautiful thing about that story is understanding where I am now. To live is to die. 
You can't accept just one side without accepting the totality of the other side. And another beautiful thing is he lives with me. He lives on with me. He's here with me now. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's, sim it's simply transformed. So when I begin to create things, he lives on through me. He helps me with creation of all of my products, he and my other ancestors. And so when I tell you all about things like, you know, in the middle of the night, I wake up and this is how I created everything. Voices like that, my guys like that, it's what, where I get this information from. My inner being, like people, you know, energies like that. You know, you in church might call it the Holy Ghost, but I have named for what it is. It's, it's those that were before me that helped me on my journey because love connects us to all. And I'm still connected to my guru through love. So, I don't know. I don't know why I felt the need to share that with you all, but I did. <laughs> I did. Maybe somebody needed that for clarity. So, y'all still up in here? Yeah. So, that's how that go. The Bible say, oh, taste and see how sweet it is. For real, huh? Amen. Amen. Yes. Y'all talk about all kinds of stuff up here. Super, who is this person? Um, Dana. You talk about Super Bowl. Be gone. You know what, Dana? Is that Dana? Wait a minute. Let me see. I I don't I don't normally be blocking people, but um, go go ahead on with all of that there. That's that's my first block, y'all. Look, wait, look. That's my first block. I don't, I don't be blocking people, but. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That was my first block, so mm -mm. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? What do y'all want to talk about up in here? Here, that's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we gotta yeah go <laughs> go me. I huh? wait wait wait. I have a little song, little sound. There you go. Look, you're out of there. Go back to 3D, whoever you are, because they were saying Super Bowl and Dracula and like what? What are you? Who are you talking to? Anyway. Questions, chakras, that's what you want to talk about today? You asked me that before. Let's talk about chakras. What about them? How to heal them? How to um, balance them? Uh, trauma within them? How sickness and disease is because one of your chakra crews and energy is blocked? Which part? Tell me. You you tell me and I'll roll with it, grateful. I'll wait for your reply. Yeah, that was my first block. Like, I don't be blocking people. <laughs> How to heal them? Somebody over here say how to heal them. How to heal them. You can heal them through food and through mindfulness and through music. There's so many different ways. I'm waiting on Miss Grateful. How do you unblock and heal them? Yes. Let's talk about knowing self. I love how I need help with this. And you was right here to help. Oh, I'm happy for you. Okay, let me get my chair. Let me get my chair. Let me get my chair. Y'all about to put me to work running my motor. Alright. Alright, I'm coming. Y'all tap the screen. I'm coming. Tap the screen. Tap, tap, tap. Alright. Alright, we're talking about chakras. How to heal them and how to open them. All right, I thought y'all wanted to talk about. I thought y'all wanted to talk about blood today, but I guess we on something else. We got some different people. Ways of being grounded daily. Okay, so beautiful. I can listen to you all day. You are very spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been through a lot to get here too. Near death experiences and all kind of things. Um, I know about them, but I feel like I can learn more from you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know, you know, over there when I came in, you were showing how to get your blood type or something. Can you go back? Okay. So blood type, I'll go over that one more time for those people that's, um, asking about that because I know they have some people up in there because we're going to be on chakras for a minute. So if you're trying to get your blood type, if you don't know your blood type, you go to Amazon. Somebody type this in, E-L-D-O-N. You put in Amazon Home Kit. Amazon Home Kit. That's gonna help you get your blood uh, kit. 
for you to figure out what your blood type is. You could do that at home, pricking your finger with the package that they come, come with in the card and everything. Now you know, because basically your, the card, the blood that you put on the card is gonna let you know what your blood type is. You have a little legend to, to tell you whether or not you're O, A, B, A, B, and so forth, negative and positive, it'll let you know. After you have your blood type, that's when you go to my website, link in the bio, based upon your blood type, and you get you um, your at-home um, meal plan, your downloadable at-home potion, weight loss, uh, cheat codes, and everything that you need to do wherever you are in your journey is going to be one of these. Either you get the second one, this one of these black tabs. Either you get the second one, which is the meal plan, or you get the bundle, which is everything that you're going to ever need to know based upon your blood type. When you get, when you select it, you make sure that you select your blood type so you can get the right one. You make sure that you put in the right email address so you can get the right one. So by selecting, you're selecting your blood type right there. You're selecting your blood type, then you add that to the cart and it's an instant download. You'll have it in your inbox, I mean, in your email as soon as you make the purchase of it. Now you're equipped with everything that you need. If you're sick, you start with the herbal potion. It'll say in red, start here if you're sick. That's going to be some oils and the highly beneficial herbs for your blood type. That's going to help to lubricate your liver and kidneys, large and small intestines, and old fecal matter will begin to ex be expelled out of your body. It's going to help heal your body because those herbs and oils are highly beneficial meaning that your blood creates a chemical reaction that's going to be positive that's going to put your body into a detox phase and that's going to help with um the footprint to your dna for your dna strains to be activated for basically what i'm saying is for you to not have tainted blood for you to have hydrochloric acid in your gut for you to be whole and healthy all over again so that you will have your digestive enzymes and increase your microbiome diversity inside of your gut based upon the foods that you're now eating because you're finally now eating for you instead of against you. All of this is available on my website, www.saltoftheearthpub.org. Hey God, it's Mark. Hey, hey Mark, how you doing? It was super easy to use, right. Eldon, E L D O N. All right, y'all got that? Y'all got that? Perfect. So today we're going to be talking about chakras and how to heal them is what is being requested. And how to heal them and what else? Let's see. I know about them, but I feel like I learned more. I can listen to you all day. Ways of being grounded. Okay. Okay. All right. How to unblock and how to heal them and ways to be grounded. So to unblock them, first of all, I would say start off with the heart. And this is why I teach about love. This is why I teach you all, you know, how to tap that screen and stuff and give, 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 open up that heart. Love anyway. This is why I always tell you all that one of my favorite scriptures, you know, to think upon the things that are lovely. And so you, you start, you want to start if you have, I don't care if you have thyroid issues. I don't care if you have your sacral chakra issues or your root chakra that is out of balance. Your heart chakra is the most powerful form of energy that you have in your body because here's the thing. Love heals love all and love connects us to other planes, right? Just like my ancestors that are with me, just like my guru that is with me, I'm connected with the two of these energies based upon the love that we have for one another. There is no separation. You might have somebody that pays and you, you think that's, oh, that's your angel. That's love that's connecting you to your angel, to your loved one. And so the thing about love is this here. Love is like, our heart is like an electromagnetic field of energy. That's how it connects us to other realms, other dimensions. People all across the world can feel our love for them. When we think about somebody, just like how I was teaching what you, you are with the telepathic communication ability, we were connected through love, through interacting, through a like for each other, me and my guru. And so I was able to feel him and pick up on him. It was not that his love or his message was not there prior to that, 
I just wasn't in balance enough with myself to hear that or recognize what that energy was in my life. So when you walk in a room, people, you know how they talk about an aura, people is are feeling your so-called love and light. They're feeling your aura and what it is made of, your uh, invisible shield, right? And so this invisible shield, just imagine that you have like a bubble around you. You have a bubble around you and, <laughs> and based upon your knowledge of self, based upon you um, unclogging all uh, chakra pools of energy inside of your body, your bubble gets bigger, right? Your bubble gets really, really, really powerful. But to other people, to other people, your bubble is really light. Your bubble is a spectrum of light. So really they're seeing your light. They're seeing your love or lack of love light when you approach them, when you come around him, right? Yeah, I can tell the difference. Because love is, yeah, it makes me happy. Yeah, I just learned or found out last year that my heart chakra is what I need to unblock the most. Definitely. I would say that for everybody. So your light, your light or lack thereof is drawing other people in or is repelling people based upon your heart chakra being open. But when your heart chakra is open, it has enough power to penetrate in since it's an electromagnetic field of energy that extends outside of you it also st uh, stems up and down so this electromagnetic field of energy if your heart is open has enough power to open up your throat chakra has enough power to open up your um first eye your crown chakra as above so below so it has power to open up your sacral chakra your solar plex and your root chakra okay because of your love and so to open up your heart chakra i teach people to open up their mouth and speak from their heart because from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks just like the gut just like i teach you all the gut is a is a brain and you have another brain up here you got these two brains right so these things are connected everything is connected though your heart is connected to your throat so these are organs all of these chakra pools of energy that i'm talking about correlate with a different organ in your body so your heart and your organ of the heart is connected to the organ of the throat and so when i teach to open up the heart as far as spirituality is concerned i'll give you several ways but it's for spirituality, which has to be there first before it manifests into the physical. You talk about how you feel. You start saying, I am statements. What you're really doing is getting more into your feminine than your masculine state of being. Because, you know, feminine ladies, you know, the little, what they call it, I'm being ugly, they call it the dumb blonde like energy, like, right? So the dumb blonde, she'll be like, I feel that the dumb blind, that feminine energy per se, talks about how she feels all the time. But your heart expression is, I feel. That's your heart's language. So when it's time to open up your heart, you start to speak about how you feel through your mouth. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so being that you begin to say, I feel statements, you are opening up your heart because you're letting us know, you're letting yourself know what's in there. You're not guarding it anymore. You're allowing your love to flow. Being that you're speaking in I feel statements, you're reminding yourself of how you're feeling and your heart energy is getting larger you know how i say about energy the things that you give your attention to the things that you're talking about the most it becomes greater so really when you start to do i feel statements you're exercising your heart simultaneously you building up your aura sending a new light to your electromagnetic field that is extending out there and that's why other people <laughs> you'll feel like 
familiar to other people. If you be a state of peace, people like being around you. People like to talk to you because your heart is open. And so those so-called, and I'm just throwing out names. I ain't judging nobody, but you know this by these names. Those so-called like independent, so to speak, people, women, they have this aura that I don't need these other people, right? I don't need to open up my heart. I'm large and in charge and I'm the boss. So pretty much what's happening energetically is their heart is closed. They ain't talking about these type of women. And I ain't picking on nobody, but they don't talk about how they feel. No, I got to handle it. You know, you know, I, nobody else going to do it, so I'm going to do it. You know? So that heart chakra is closed for them. It's closed because they won't open it up. So in order for them to ever experience even love, and so if I talk about an independent woman who do has been doing everything her, on her own, she ain't even hearing this. She don't understand this energetically, but some men will be like, man, I didn't even know you even needed help. You never said nothing. I mean, you don't talk to nobody. You got to tell people. So what they really saying is, man, you got to open up your heart. Because the opposite of you is that is that so-called dumb blonde or that feminine woman who's like, hey, it really, it really feel great if you come over and help me with this because I don't even know what I'm doing. And But to that macho woman, she's like, that's weakness to her. I don't know how to do that. If I got to beg for stuff, no, I ain't begging. But it's really not begging. It's being balanced. It's being in tune with the matters of your heart. It's letting your heart speak. Regardless if the person going to do it for you or not, you open up your heart and you say how you felt. Here's the thing, though. When you begin to open up your heart, nobody don't want to hear all of the bad things that you feel, but that's going to come out. Just make sure that the good feelings outweigh the bad. You know, when you first start opening up your heart, you probably be like, well, I, you know, I tell you to say, I feel statements. Well, I ain't feel like I, what I had to say mattered. I feel like everybody been ignoring me. I feel like I'm being attacked. You know, no, everybody don't want to hear that. People want to hear the good feeling stuff because that's the thing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so that's the thing. Hey, dear, dear. That's the thing that draw other people in. Nobody don't want to hear all the bad. The good got to outweigh the bad. So I would say to practice like outside and I do it with y'all, but this is, I ain't practicing. I already know this. I do it without y'all. I ain't talk about how good it feels to be out there with my hummingbirds. Oh, the sun out here in Arizona feels so perfect. Man, the birds are so beautiful. It feels like heaven on earth. And guys, I'm, I'm going to do me a garden. It's going to feel like the garden of Eden, even though I've never been to no garden of Eden. It's going to be my garden. And I feel so excited about it. I be feeling like a little girl. I be feeling like, you know, at night when I'm looking underneath the stars, if I'm out there by myself, I feel like I'm alone in a boundless universe. And I could just create anything it is that I want. I feel so magical. I feel so free, you know, like that. And so when men call you, you could practice this here. Or when a girl or lady call you, you could practice this here. You're feminine because men have both. We all have yin and yang. So we all have masculine and feminine prim, prim, uh, principles based upon every chakra pool of energy that we have, right? But I'm talking about the heart chakra. Men can practice this too because men need to know how to express and communicate themselves and speak their truth to for themselves because mm -hmm, anybody in the physical reality have two sides of themselves and if one side is not speaking itself it causes dis-ease and disharmony for that particular person so men they'll want to suck stuff up and not speak their truth they'll want to you know not talk about how they feel man don't, don't even worry about it man but they can do it in a masculine way like man i'm, I'm so lucky i got that job man i feel like you know Things are looking up. I feel optimistic, bro. You know, they could still kind of say how they feel. They just don't have to be dainty about it, but they got to speak from their heart. If not, it bites people in their ass. And so now their heart chakra is stagnated if they don't. 
And so what happens for the people whose hearts is stagnating? They stagnate their relationships, like the independent woman, for example. Even in the physical reality, those people who never understood how to speak their truth or open up their heart, they end up with sicknesses and diseases like breast cancer or heart uh, problems like high blood pressure, heart attacks. These things manifest in the physical reality based upon that chakra pool of energy being clogged up by that person. So every time somebody's talking about a disease, and I consult people with diseases now, you got to go to the spiritual side of things. We got to go to love to heal it because all sickness and disease manifest from somebody's trauma. And it's going to manifest in that particular organ where the trauma was experienced, right? Where they decided to close up their chakra pool of energy. I told you all that I had thyroid issues. So my, so my trauma, my, my, my issue spiritually stemmed from the fact that I decided to close my mouth and don't express myself because I thought it meant I was going to have to be a pastor. I thought it meant that I I had to speak in front of people, you know? So I was like, nah, I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm going to shut up. And I didn't want to do that. So I clogged up my throat energetically because I wasn't talking. And in the physical reality, it manifested as thyroid issues. But to open up, my, to clear my thyroid, you in the physical that pay attention more to the 0 0.01, you will say, oh, you... Girl, you healed your thyroid because you had your selenium, like you teach. You had your iodine, like you teach. Mm -hmm. You had your magnesium, like you teach. Because I taught you that about thyroid issues, right? Well, I was doing those things. But my healer helped me heal both physically by doing the physical things and spiritually by doing the spiritual things that I needed. Because I needed both. I needed to open up my heart for love, too as well as do the physical. This is why I come at you all teaching you about your blood type, physical, but I also teach you, open up your heart. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Finally, think upon these good things that are lovely, have a good report, they be in the virtue, and I'm thinking on it. I, I, I show you the spiritual side to it. Now, a lot of people don't be wanting to hear, they done left the, some of them done left the room because I'm talking about the spiritual, but the spiritual is 99.999% of all that there is. It ain't going to manifest in the physical. At least it come from the spiritual. So you want to open up the heart. So that's one way you open up the heart by I feel statements. And then you, you do it with, with everybody. Your children. I feel so happy you're home. I, I was thinking about you. I feel so proud of your mom. You do it at your boss. You know, at your job. You know, not the job. You got to kind of be... You know, more masculine, there's a time for all things, right? So if you're at a boss, your boss at the job, you be you, you do your masculine, but every now and then it's okay to tap into the feminine I feel statement. I feel like I have a good team, good support team here, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. You see what I'm saying? So you're still speaking from the heart, and this is true. You can't you don't lie energetically with this because you can't lie about your energy, because energy don't lie. Your aura ain't gonna lie. So we got to put beyond the, the lying stuff, you know, the fake it till you make it kind of stuff. No, speak the things that are true, that have virtue in them. And so that's, that's one way to open up the heart. And then other people, they'll go to um, the chakra, um, I mean, not the chakra, the, um, the crystals. You know, the rose quartz crystal will help you open up the heart. That's another way. Tibetan bowls that are attuned to 432 hertz of healing frequency. That's another way. And even if you don't have the Tibetan bowls on YouTube, you could YouTube 432 frequency to listen to. And that frequency is attuned to a love frequency. Amen. Or it doesn't lie. Yeah, I say. Or it doesn't lie. And so that 432 healing frequency is attuned to a love frequency. So that's a signal. That's another way to open up the heart. Then foods can open up the heart. The green foods, green, all of them green um, vegetables on your um, food chart that are highly beneficial, that's in alignment with your blood type, can open up your heart too. And I like to choose the peppers, for example, because the peppers have all um, four of the lower chakra 
colors to them, like right? So for example, a green pepper, a green pepper. You think about, um, cause green and pink could represent the heart chakra, right? The green essence of it is the ability to go and, and you know, purge your blood. So a green pepper, you could go um, eat more fruits, I mean, some more vegetables that are green too, to open up the heart. You could drink rose tea to open up your heart. Cause these things, the reason why I say these things, because they are at a high frequency. Rose, AKA love, is the most powerful form of energy that there is. So drinking rose tea can help you open up your heart. So acts of kindness helps you open up your heart. So the more you practice that, the more you helping the other organs be unclogged too, because love could heal all of them. And then you begin to speak through your habitual thoughts when you're not even talking to somebody about the things you love. I love it here. You know, even when I'm, when I'm laying in the bed before I even get up to come, I think about the things that I love. I love going live and talking to people because I know I'm helping people. I love knowing that I'm helping people with their health and wellness. These could be your habitual thoughts. I love knowing that I'm on a journey and I never could get this thing called life wrong. I love knowing that I'm learning. Oh my God, it feels so good to learn. I feel so happy with my progress. I can remember a moment when I longed to be here. I love knowing that I one day manifested being here. Look at me. You know, just being happy and optimistic within your inner thoughts instead of, man, it's raining outside. Oh man, I forgot the umbrella. Oh look, my shoe's wet because I stepped in a puddle thinking about the most negative things ain't going to get you there because you don't. that's not being on a love frequency. Finding things to love is the love frequency. Going outside, it's the desert. There are people that will go outside in the desert and be like, man, it is busy hot out there. When I open up my door to go outside, I'm like, man, the sky is so freaking clear. I've never used to see clouds like, I mean, crisp skies like this. We always had clouds out there and in New Orleans. I feel so lucky to have a clear sky. I mean, this sun be shining every day. Oh my God, I just love the sun. It seems like the sun is just my sun because it's be right here, just be right here on my shoulder. Every time I go outside, it's like, hey, how are you? I'm your son and I'm right here. You got to find the good, be optimistic about life. That's love. Oh, I love my son. Oh, I love being out here in the desert. I love my ability to mas be a master manifester. These are the things that I love because love is expanding your aura, your aura, your energy feel because you're paying attention to love and you're going to find more ways to experience love. So we have people who will focus instead on one chakra and it won't be love. They'll be like, man, my root chakra is, I'm going to tell you the difference. Why it's so important to open up the heart chakra first. Man, my root chakra, um, clogged and I know it. I know it's clogged up because, um, I don't feel safe because I, you, you know, which one is unclogged based upon how you feel. I don't feel safe. I feel like somebody else to get me. I feel like abandoned. Nobody don't want to hear nothing that I got to say. You know, my mom and my daddy never used to listen to me. My grandma died when I was two years old and she was my caregiver and I don't have nobody. The people that go through those type of things, their root chakra is out of balance. And so they think, you know, oh, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to get my own place and I'm going to get on my own feet and, you know, I'm going to be all right. No, you're not. Because your aura field or your energy field, the bubble that other people and the universe says here more, there you go. That bubble that other people are getting when you walk up in the room is that she don't feel safe. That bubble represents the signal that the other people see. That bubble represents all your jibber jabber, your energy, your, <laughs> but it's words, unsafe, fear, abandoned, left, abort, run. You know, just your, <laughs> your energy feel, your energy in motion is saying all that toxic stuff that you've been thinking. And so you thought the house was going to do it because grandma left you, was homeless and now I got my house, now I'm good. 
your root chakra is still out of balance though. And it's going to always be out of balance until you heal your heart. Until you find love. Until you begin to say, well, grandma's not here in the physical reality. And, and But here's the thing. I kind of like feel her, her presence. You know, maybe, maybe she helped me. You know, maybe she helped me find this place, you know. Man, I love that lady. I used to just feel so angry that, that you opening up your heart. I used to just feel so angry that she left me, but maybe her leaving me, you know, maybe I could find a good, because if it was so much of bad, I could find a good. Maybe maybe her leaving me and all of the conscious stuff that she said to me, maybe now it's my turn for me to do these things that she used to always tell me, you know. Maybe it's time for me to start believing in a higher power, like what more used to, you know, try to tell me. So I'm gonna I'm start believing, you know. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start feeling hopeful. I'm gonna start feeling that she's with me instead. I'm gonna open up my heart to the idea of that she she ain't mean nothing when she left me before, when I was just a little child. That things, you know, things are all, are looking up on the up. You know, I got my place now. It feel like home. I, Man, I know she's looking down on me. I can feel her now. You see that? So you, when you get there, when you get to that place, you got to open up your heart to make peace still. So why not just open up the heart first? <laughs> this is akin to healing. This is really what I do with my consultations with people all the time. We get to the root of the why do you feel this kind of way in an effort to get them to open up their heart anyway to heal their trauma and as soon as they open up their heart for most people they begin to cry boo hoo roll on the floor but that's purging of the heart that is so necessary when your heart has been closed and you had canines and barbed wire fences and all of these things around it because you didn't want nobody to get in but you were also stopping yourself or your heart or your love from getting out so when you open it, it's like the tears begin to roll down the people's face that I consult with. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was doing that to me. I thought I was pushing them away. But no, life is happening through you. You're the upper in power. And at your best, your love. So when you refuse to love, that's what happened to your body. And so those people, they get sickness and disease. You know the sacred chakra people that 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 maybe, maybe they were molested they they need a healing too because they close off that particular region and they signal saying no don't touch her she don't like women no more she don't he don't like men no more he gay he he a fag he this whatever they call it he lbgt elemental p q or s y z he one of them that's his signal that's his aura how did he get there? Because he closed off of this chakra pool of energy. And he refused to let a woman touch him because his auntie touched him. Or his uncle touched him. And he said, I'll be damned. And not saying that anything you sleep with whoever, you bump cats with whoever you want to bump cats with. I ain't saying that. You do your thing because all is God. But I am saying, if you feel like no one can touch you or somebody's gonna hurt you in this region it's gonna manifest in the physical reality your aura gonna pronounce it you're gonna have a chakra pool of energy that's unhealed and if you hold on to that hurt right up in here you're gonna be the one with ovarian cancer you're gonna be the one with prostate issue you're gonna be the one with 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 with, with that cyst down there all of that shows up because of energetically I feel out of balance right here has to be pronounced in the spiritual realm and then it manifests. Oh, you are in balance? Okay, here's something to show you that you out of balance. Here go your cancer. Here go your tumor. Yeah, you, you, you feel out of balance. So until, when you handle the way that you feel, then you get back in balance and the sickness and disease can be no more. See, I teach, I teach about health and wellness as it pertains to what you put in your mouth. But guess what I'm doing though? I'm teaching you how to love yourself. I'm teaching you how to be optimistic about them highly beneficial food. I'm teaching you that, wait a minute, there's some O's in this house that you're God. It's a, it's a tactic behind everything that I'm doing here. 
I'm teaching you how to be hopeful. I'm teaching you that, that biblical text, finally, my brethren, what's over things that are pure, that are just, that, if they have any virtue in your highly beneficial foods, eat them. Think on these things. And that heals your chakra pools of energy. So you could get a crystal to help because strict crystals help to you to stay in alignment to who you are. You know, the red jasper, like for the root chakra, you know, it'll help you get, get grounded and help also to ground you. Not only red jasper, going to food, we'll do the red food for your blood type. And I'd like to go to the pepper. So I'll say the red pepper. Make sure you have that in your food as your chopped up seasoning. Then to help further you with being grounded, going outside, finding a nice little area where ain't you no know, dogs pooping and stuff to stand barefooted because mother nature is nourishing for those who feel out of balance in their root chakra. Go outside. It's almost, it's akin to you standing in the, the soil on, you know, the grass. It's like you're a telephone on a charging um, station because all of the minerals and that life force that's in that soil is going to charge you up and make you feel good, feel grounded, feel rooted, feel love again, feel alive again. And this is how chakras correlate to how you're feeling. This is how diseases manifest in the physical reality based upon them chakra pools of energy being out of balance based upon what organ that's closest to the imbalance in your body that you created see you god you give life and you can take it away you can create sickness just like you can create health and well-being you're manipulating the energy of yourself and so some people would think that I'd be ugly when I say you got to be accountable because you do. You have to be accountable for your whole aura field because you created it. Be accountable for the fact that you came for knowing the bloodline that you was going to take upon, the female or male aspect, the black or white aspect, the trauma aspect. You did that. You created that when you were in all knowing, but you come here and you look at somebody like me telling you that, and you're like, she tripping. I, well, I wouldn't have picked my mama that be. But you were all knowing then, and now you're dumbed down to 10% of brain capacity in human form. You were at 100% of brain capacity because you were all spirit then. But now you're having a human experience. You're a human being. Here's the thing. Your beingness will always be. <laughs> your beingness will always be because you're always going to be manipulating the energy of your beingness. You are eternal beingness. And so while your eternal beingness is in the avatar body, you feel a little bit limitless, but you're still boundless. You're bound to this avatar body until the time that you set to escape it because you came forth to learn a lesson as a human with a beingness. And so we, there are way more than seven chakra pools of energy. There are way more, but in this human avatar suit, those are the ones that people address because they coordinate with organs in this body here but there are more because you are not limited to a body you are in multi-dimensional realms all at the same time you ain't just here you're experiencing all of you you are tuned right now to this moment in time and space but simultaneously you're tuned because you you decided here in this moment in space to listen to me but there's a part of you that decided when they saw me to flick the screen and listen to somebody else. So that other part of you, since you're multidimensional, is experiencing the no. Because remember, there's a law of polarity that all things are two sides, right? So anytime you make a choice, you go down another portal and a part of you have to exist there and the other choice. The yes part of the choice and the no part of the choice. I'm telling you, 
the rabbit hole of you runs really, really deep. <laughs> Just like the chakra pool of you runs really, really deep. But the thing that you really got to understand about the chakras more than anything else is that love heals all. Open up that freaking heart. Love anyway. Forgive anyway. Don't be foolish with your love, though. Be wise with your love. As wise as a serpent, but yet as gentle as a dove. So that represents balance too. A balanced heart. And so they talk about this when we're speaking of the laws of Mayat. That your heart should be as light as a feather. Because now that we're talking about this in a whole grand scheme of things, I want you to understand this thing. Ain't nobody coming to save you. It's you dealing with you, all areas of you, your subconscious mind of you. So when we talk about putting your heart on a scale to be balanced, and it should be as light as a feather, that scale represents you <laughs> judging yourself based upon your thoughts. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't know if y'all heard that one. The scale represents you. Oh, I'm so happy for you who purchased your meal plan. Judging yourself. You know how they say, oh, I'm going to die and, and, you know, and I might go to heaven or hell. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Your thoughts. How you lived your life. How you think of yourself. How you view how you treated others. is your subconscious mind. And so it has to feel your, your rational decisions, your cognitive thinking, your reasoning. It has to feel as though to you with your heart as if you were just to you. Not to no imaginary sky daddy. To you that you followed your heart and that you love from your heart. For you to be at peace with you for this lifetime. For you to make it to other realms. You judging you. <laughs> you judging you based upon how you feel about you. That's why it's so important to open up your heart. This is what the afterlife. <laughs> this is what the afterlife is going to be about when you, when you get to this time and place in your, in your journey. You weigh your heart on a scale that you created from a lifetime that you just experienced. And you got to be right with you. So of all the chakra pools of energy there is, make sure that your heart chakra pool is open because it's going to pave the way for you to get into other realms and dimensions. It's going to pave the way for your aura to expand. It's going to pave the way for you to have higher levels of consciousness. Because nothing but the pure in heart can get into some rooms. There are some rooms that you can, and all of this is happening here. See, see, I want you to know that this is happening here. You're never dying, so this is happening here. There's no place that this is happening. So I'll share one of my experiences with you. And keep in mind. This is happening here. Ain't no there. It's here. So I was meditating. I was meditating. <laughs> and my body was lifting up off of the... Y'all still out there? Y'all still out there? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Are y'all listening? Goddess. We talk about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was meditating. It's never a dull moment on your life. Yeah, Candy. Because Condra, y'all here? Ladybug. Okay, okay, okay. Not right now, Mark. Not right now. I, I Somebody asked for this, baby. You got to wait for me to get back on the blood. I was meditating in my room. I was meditating in my room and my body levitated off of the bed. Deep meditation. Some people have been meet, read, meet that, you know, got into that place. You have my attention. Okay, good. So I was meditating. My body began to levitate off of the bed. And I said, with authority, because that's just how I am. When it comes to seeing and feeling other things, I speak with authority because you can't be you can't be a punk under pressure in the, in this in these realms. You just can't. So I said, put me down now. And my body 
slowly went back on the bed. And then I closed my eyes and was meditating some more. And I said, I said, put me down now. I am a mother first. And so I'm talking to really my consciousness, right? But I can see at the same time I was in Louisiana at this time. And I could see through the walls. I, my boy was up in his room playing his game. A lot of people don't reach this, this level, but stay with me. He's playing his game and I said, he's not ready for me to leave yet because I thought, I thought I was dying in this, 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 um, spiritual encounter that I had, right? <laughs> I thought I was dying. I thought that was me going home, you know, going up the stairs or whatever crap religion had me in my head, <laughs> the pearly white gates or whatever, right? And I sat back down and in this room, in this bedroom, my oldest at the time was away for college, but the baby boy was up in the other room. In the bedroom, I shift to where my college student was and I just smiled at him and I saw what he was doing in that time and space. I saw him in that time and space. I saw him just like I saw the one that was up in there playing the game and I knew what both of them was doing. And so I levitated off the, the, uh, the bed <laughs> and I, I began to see a group of people that felt so familiar, that felt so like family, that was telling me, come, come, it's time to go, come, you told us to come and get you at this time, oh, they'll be all right, I said, I'm not going nowhere, and they were talking, it was like, you see, you see, I knew she was going to get stuck in, in that body, I knew, I knew she wouldn't want to come, I knew it, she didn't got... You know, she fell in love with da da da, da and she, she's, if she stays, she's going to hurt herself. She needs to go. She needs to go now. And they were jibber-jabbering, talking about me. And I'm looking at them talking about me, how much they love me, and how much it was my time for this particular journey. And I was like, I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't, I'm, you know, I know in my heart, I knew that they were for me. I felt comfortable with them, but I was like, no, I have children. You don't understand. I have children. What are you doing to me? <laughs> in that room, in the physical, my son, my oldest son that was away from college came for in front of this bed. Mind you, I'm still in the bed in this here realm. And he's like, Ma, go. Go, Ma. You need this. Go. You're going to be so happy when you get back go and now I'm crying I'm in the bed literally in the physical I'm crying it's like but I love you are you sure what how long am I gonna be gone what are they doing what's going on are you in on this I saw 100% of brain capacity that my son chose me <laughs> my children chose me I, I clear his day I knew this that he chose to spend life with me that he he wants in another lifetime with other characters in my journey, it was all, it all made sense. And he was like, mom, yeah, I'm in on this and da 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 you gotta go, trust me, we'll be here when you come back. We'll be, I promise, we're gonna be where you're going. We'll be there, I promise. I was like, you sure? I was like, okay. And so I closed my eyes and I will allow this here to happen. I allowed the process of me levitating off of this here bed. And so I levitated and it was almost like I was going up a, a, a elevator. But I'm sitting in the end style because I, all I was doing was meditating. All it was was mindfulness for me. So it felt like I was going up an elevator. In the elevator, you know how like when you're on a physical elevator, you see the numbers. I was seeing spectrums of light. And I, I could hear numbers being called out. 10%, 20%, 30%. 40%. And then when it got to 80, then it said 80% of brain capacity, 90% of brain capacity, 100% of brain capacity. And when it got to 100%, my body exploded. Kundalini awakening, upgrading, right? This is what I'm sharing with you. But I was in that bed in that New Orleans home when this was happening. I went my body, it was almost like my body went into the nothingness, into the, into the, to the, to the heavens, almost like the, 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 um, 
the atmosphere amongst the stars amongst other planets and so much so amongst them that saturn saturn the planet itself the molecules the atoms it was people around the ring it was all of the energy was spectrum of particles that i stemmed from i saw everything i felt my blood at a cellular level the molecules of the blood rushing through my veins the particles the nucleus everything i saw everything at its very least structure but together it was Love was the thing that was connecting this entire universe together. And I could not have gotten to that place had I not be pure enough in heart to be there. And so when I got there, I wasn't thinking about my boys in that moment in time because everything, the memory of this realm wasn't there. Like you don't be, you wasn't, I wasn't longing for them, like, right? And so, but when I got there, <laughs> I was tapped back into 100% of my brain capacity and I felt like home again, like, right? But mind you, my physical body on that bed in Louisiana, I felt like home. I felt like this is my family and that they had always been looking out for me and been there for me. And I'm like, okay. In my mind, I have no thoughts about my children. Now, mind you, on that bed, I was crying about my children, but I wasn't sad no more for them because it was that they were with me. And one of the energies that was on the, um, the, the um, you know how Saturn has it, the rings. One of the energy that was on the rings, thank you, that was on the rings was my boy. Both of my boys. And they came from, a, from around the ring and they warped into a human form. And they had long hair. In the physical, the hair wasn't long just yet, but they had long hair. They were they had muscles and strength, and they they were beautiful. Just their face was showing, but you know, their aura was so strong and mighty, like giants. And they're like, and, and, and they said, "I told you we was gonna be here," and we laughed and we hugged because there was no separation. And he said, congratulations on your upgrade. There'll be many more for you. And I was like, what do you mean? And all of a sudden, I'm on like that elevator experience that I felt going up. The elevator was going down. I was like, what do you mean? What? I got to go back? But I don't want to go back. No. Why? Is this a bad thing? And he was like, no. We're always with you. It's just one of your many ascensions. <laughs> You judging yourself, seeing if you're pure enough. You see what I mean here? We have out of body experiences. We have ascensions while in this realm. We're connected to other beings, your inner being in other realms while in this realm. But you gotta be open hearted about it. You gotta believe in something. You have to have your heart and your mind focused. You gotta be fearless. Had I not, cause prior to that I had been through rooms. See, this wasn't the first time I've been to something, you know, out of body type experience. Had I not had the other encounters before this one, the other encounters where I saw stuff that was scary, where I saw, you know, sockets not in the eyeballs and stuff like that. Had I not, seen that before and had the the um been fearless how i was saying put me back down had i not had this self-assurance had i went over there my fear would have made that a nightmare based upon how i felt about myself but i felt confident i felt self-assured i felt love in that moment and that's the thing that successfully allowed me to take that spiritual trip and brought me back in this moment in time. And so when I return in my moment in time, the energies of those beings that were familiar to me, that were my family, or the same energies and the beings that assist me in my physical reality now, and you can call it what you choose to call it, but I'm tapped into them beings. And when I talk and I hear those beings, 
when I asked a question, like just a minute ago, I was like, what, 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 what is it, the ring? They told me, the rings, you talk about the ring. I hear, this is the same gifts that you have through love. <laughs> love gonna get you there. Love is the key to all of this here in, the, in, in, in this realm, I promise you. Love. You making sense? <laughs> I'm hopeful that I make sense to somebody. But they have crazy people who make it sense too. But the difference is sometimes we get in the loop and we don't know what all of this here is happening. This is why another reason why you want to open up that heart first. This is why a reason why I will for, do not you ever try to open up your first eye if you ain't open up your heart first. Because You'll get trapped sometimes. You know, some of them people that's underneath the bridge, they done got trapped into more than one dimension. They, it's almost like they're they're on the bed, like what I was saying. They're on the bed in New Orleans. But yet, they're having the encounter spiritually. And so we see them on the bed having the encounter, but we see them thinking that they a planet or whatever I experience out there thinking that some people are talking to them, so they'll be up in there talking to themselves and wobbling their head underneath the bridge, looking crazy to us. But they done tapped into another realm and they don't know how to come back. They don't know how to get back because they didn't open up that heart. They get out there and they'll trip. They, I don't want to say out there, they get into their mind because these portals are happening in your mind. They get into their mind and they'll trip out in their mind. And people will say, people will say when somebody get high, oh man, he tripping. Surely they are. Because we have dimethyltryptamine ability in our head. We can go on trips through mindfulness like I did without a drug. And go to other realms and see things. And so on that realm, and what I'm not sharing with you is a, the guide for the next chapter in my life. So when you get these ascensions, when these kundalini energies happen with you, you get assignments for the next chapter of your life. It's like you shape shifting into another being. When you have these type of encounters with source energy, you're never the same no more. The person that prior to that ascension ain't here no more. She done got upgraded. The 10% of the brain, brain capacity ain't that little no more. When you return from these ascensions, you get another upgrade. So you upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Partner, let me upgrade you until you become the Christ conscious one in physical. You are supposed to have this happening in physical. Heaven on earth right here in your simulated environment. This is the levels that I'm trying to get you all through. Through mindfulness, through eating right for your blood type, through loving yourself, because I understand that love is the thing, the tool that you're gonna need in every realm. They have dimensions, they have realms that you go in where it is pure love. You have to have the ability to freaking focus. And you have to have an aura of love because on these levels ain't no two sides, it's just love. Thank you for the gift, babe. It's just love and none but the pure in heart can get into that room. <laughs> none but the pure in heart. You can't be wobbling. You can't be thinking about what, 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 what your daddy did to you. Not in that room. But you can't enter in that room until you clear up what daddy did to you. Your brother did to you. Your chakra pools of energy that are out of balance. So I teach love. I teach love. Let's see. Thank you, Goddess Just Be, for your knowledge. Yes, love, love, love. Yep. You right about that? So y'all got that? So that in a nutshell is how you um clear the chakra pools of energy. You're welcome, babe. Absolutely. Kundalini experience. Yes. That's how you clear your chakra pools of energy. You focus on open up your heart first. And that's the reason why you want to open up your heart because you have other realms you have to explore. Earth is like um kindergarten, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you always bring in me to tears. Oh, ladybug, oh my. <laughs> Earth is like kindergarten. 
and you call me for it to help you as your teacher, but I'm still a student too. I'm still a student. We all just vibrating at different frequencies. I'm still a student, but to some, I'm, you know, a teacher, but I'm learning as I go on my journey. And maybe you have not been through some of the things that I've been through just yet, but they are coming for you in your form of how you view the world, maybe because of your belief. And see, here's the thing. That's why you don't, you don't matter if you believe in Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, to Jesus, to Christian, or whoever. Whatever you believe in is the energy that's going to come for you. Just, just believe in something. Whatever you believe, that's the portal you go down. So say, for example, if I believed in Jesus, maybe Jesus would have been up there. You know, if I believed in Buddha, maybe I would have been, you know, telecommunicating or transporting to underneath the tree. You see? But that's how it is. It is according to your belief. It's according to what you got in your subconscious mind. That's why I say, make sure you open up that heart. Because if you got, if you got the devil, if you got hell up in there, you gonna cast yourself to hell. You got to hate up in there. Whatever you got, all your skeletons up in there need to be cleansed by you taking care of, and opening up these chakra pools of energy and not being fearful, not feeling like you ain't protected in all of this crazy stuff here. We got to heal that first before you go open up this here. Because prior to that, I had some fears coming from religion. Religion to have you shaking in your boots when you see some of these things. I had the fear of the so-called devil from a little girl, I used to have the fear of the little bo boogeyman because my inner beings been calling my name since I was a little girl. And so I had conjured up some fear of some of those things and then going to church and then they, being able to hear my inner being, but yet hear my mom, my mom telling me my inner being is the devil. So I was like torn. So when it, in the beginning of my journey with mindfulness, I had to face my demons that I created based upon a boogeyman idea that I had in my head. And this is akin to the, what the uh, spiritual people talking about with shadow work. It is the part of the, yourself that you don't want to deal with. Maybe your trauma. Maybe your fear of going outside in the dark. Maybe your fear of, you know, snakes or whatever your fear is. When you get to him, oh, it's right there. And you can't lie energetically. So a snake might show up and you got to be like, away from me you can oh my god because what happened when you do you just like i teach you about energy what happened when you do like oh my god the snake get bigger <laughs> so you gotta know that you know who you are in these realms that's why i was like put me down now and mean it because if you could smell your own fear in your own mind. So your mind will give you more. The blessings of God are yea and amen. And it goes according to how you fear. How you um, feel. And if it's fear. You create with fear. I meditated one time in the beginning of my journey. And thinking from a religious spec, um, aspect. I was trying to fly in the sky with doves. But from a religion aspect. It was like oh my God. You're, you're not protected. Oh my God, what are you doing? What do you mean you're meditating? Something going to get you up in here. And sure enough, with those fears, those doves turned into black hawks and they turned around and they began to peck at me. And I felt that and it felt painful in my mind. It was so real. This thing be so real because it's really happening in your other multiple dimensions that you play a part in. And they begin to peck at me. And I stayed out of meditation for a long time. I was like, shit, I ain't go back up in there. And I stunted my own growth for all of those months because I was afraid of freaking birds. And every time I would think about going back in, I'd be like, no. Nah. Because something would say, come on, come on, come meditate. Because we're going to get you. We're ready for you. That's what my, my thinking, my fear had me thinking. But I had to face one day my fear. Had I not faced one day my fear, I would have never been able to get to the ascension part of my journey for Kundalini energy. I would never be able to get to the ascension part, nor would I be able to hear as clearly as I do my inner beings speaking with me. Because I would have been so fearful. I was like, no, I can't do what you say. No, because my mama said that was the devil. This is why, back to that biblical text, God has not given us a spirit of fear power and of love and a sound mind this is why meditation and focus and ability to hold a focus is so important you're gonna need this in every realm every dimension see this food stuff about to get played out 
this 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 this, this um, medical industry, this religion type stuff, about to get played out in in the, in the matrix. It's gonna be your ability to focus because we are sending your ability to focus and have a controlled imagination. That's your God-given power, stemming from your first eye. <laughs> These eyes about to be played out. People ain't going to be see, believing no more what they seeing with these. Because you going back, we evolving, we're going back to the first high frequency. Other higher dimensions. Oh, I thought meditation was a quiet mind, not thinking, being. I've been doing it wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. It is not thinking. That's what I was doing, quieting my mind. Imagine that I was just soaring when the birds came and that happened. But a meditation, understand this about meditation. When you are meditating, what you're really doing in layman's term is becoming one with mind, body, and soul. Your body is being still, your mind is focusing, which gets you in alignment with soul. Now you and the father are one, baby. When you or the father becomes one, that's aching to you being that nothingness. 100% of brain capacity. So now you could experience things. You could experience a lot of things. Matter of fact, you could experience all things when you are in the nothingness because you are at zero point energy where all of the nothingnesses begin from. <laughs> so it is a precious time in your journey where you could tap in to your so-called Lamb Book of Life, your Akashic Records, you all knowing self 100% of brain capacity. You see what I'm going? Because you're one. Because the illusion of separation is gone. You realize that you're one. So you could see in that in that in in, in that lifting up of the Kundalini energy, I saw myself in different worlds, in different times, different seasons, different dimensions, different lifetimes of myself, all at the same time. So yeah, 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 you ain't thinking of nothing, but you're part of everything at the same time. You remember the movie, I'm um, Lucy, at the end of the movie when she became the computer um, and she was just warping into different places, you know, different parts of the world. Remember when she called her mom and she was telling her mom, oh mom, I can, I can remember, I could taste, I could taste the taste of your, your milk. I, I remember the, the cat or whatever, and the mom on the end of the phone. And she's like, oh, you could not have possibly remembered that. You were just a baby. You were five years old or whatever. You know and you remember everything because everything in here. Your subconscious mind remembers everything. So meditation is that place. This is why the biblical in the biblical text, the Christ conscious one will go on the mouth. <laughs> to pray and mindfulness is telling you about praying and meditation and becoming one. I and the Father one. It be your subconscious connecting to the superconscious of all that there is, all that there ever will be. And so that now you know everything. Now this so-called time thing is no more because that's an illusion. That's a great illusion. Time does not exist. You don't, you, you, you the so-called live and die stuff, you know, the polarity, <laughs> the polarity thing don't exist when we're dealing with spirituality. Everything just is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, um, if it is love, why does it seem so complicated? Why isn't it simple? Well, <laughs> because we want to experience the love of so-called God or the love of ourselves, like, right? I like to think of it simply like this here. We everything and nothing. And so we go on different uh, excursions, so to speak, to get to experience the in-between of our everythingness and our nothingness different spectrums of our love, the lack of love and the totality of love. Because if you think about it with God in itself, in its essence, we in human form couldn't stand to even be in the same room with the essence of the all of God that we all stem from. We couldn't stand that. But if we were there in that essence, that would be all that we know. 
but that essence in itself wants to know itself. So it creates simulated environments and worlds and dimensions and life cycles and lifetimes and study. And then when we study and we give our experience back to source, source becomes greater and expands even more. And so then we want to learn more about the source. We're just God experiencing ourselves. And so God is almost like this big expansion of an ego that becomes greater and greater each lifetime that all of us give it and so really we just feeling up on love <laughs> we're just feeling up on love recycling our love back to God oh I love that experience give me more oh I was a black lady that time that was fun give me more and that's why life is really a game it's a game of life because when you tap in and out of other realms, you'll see it to, and you will know that you know that you know. I know this is a game. Sometimes it get really, really good because that's how cold we are at being creator, creating, and manifestors, manifesting. It seems really good. And sometimes we, I even get a little serious in this thing. And then I'll catch myself sometimes in this thing. Like, don't take it so serious. It's just a love story. They got a song that go like that. Everything in life is just a love story. We just falling in love with ourselves, stemming from ourselves, which is the love of God. That's why we don't lose. That's why we don't ever get this thing called life wrong. That's why joy is the key. <laughs> That's why mindfulness will bring you back. That's why when you go to sleep, it's almost like you're going back home, so to speak. You're going back to source. You're, you have superpowers and stuff. You have vivid dreams and stuff in your dream. And when you're sleeping, you don't, you're comfortable there. You recharge there. If your chakra pools are out of alignment and you're stressed out in your day, you can take a quick little nap and it recharges you. You have all kind of ways to open up them chakra pools, but they still, those ways open up a portal for you to find home again. That frequency again that you stem from, your inner being, sleep, Tibetan bowls, um, crystals, herbs, you know, oils. You have so many things that help you feel. You even have little mushrooms, you know, psychedelics. You have so many pathways ways to lead you back to a frequency of feeling home, at home, knowing everything, being everything, and being nothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, over my heart, now I'm ready to fly. Yeah, for real, huh? Wow, they say wow over here. All right, I've been, Lucy is the movie. Yeah, dreams seem to give information as well. Yeah, in a dream, the Bible it tells you that. The Bible gives us really a lot of hidden goals. In a dream, it says, I think it's in either Proverbs or uh, uh, Psalms. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when man sleeps and slumbers, I'll give him his orders and his instructions, right? Because it is it's that, that pivotal moment. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. You're so welcome. It's at that pivotal moment that you get to certain brain frequencies, right? When your subconscious mind is wide open. When you want that uh, beta brainwave frequency, that's akin to zero point energy where manifestations stem from that's like home right there that's like that's okay i'll give it to you in layman's term that's the darkness that was on the face of the deep <laughs> where we always do our recreations from right so whether we are recreating a world or whether we are just doing practice of mindfulness that is the cushioning place that I tell everybody when I do consultations with, I say, look, if you're going to do, if you're going to change this, make sure you listen to this here audio of mine with these affirmations, right? When you're drifting to sleep, because drifting stage, when you're drowsy, drifting, your subconscious mind is wide open to new commands, to new affirmations, to reprogram your mind, to get yourself out of that limited box or different way of thinking into thinking more boundless, more free, thinking healthy, thinking wealthy, thinking whatever it is that you're trying to think to expand your consciousness. You can think whatever you want to think, just think it not robbery to be equal with God because God is what you are, because God is what you stem from. You can't be nothing else but a God if you stem from God. 
<laughs> yeah, Lucy's a movie. It's a good movie, too. It's a good movie. It really is. Y'all should check that out if you haven't. I love watching that movie. I watch the movie over and over just to make sure I ain't miss nothing. I like it. So y'all got that? Y'all really had me going deep today. <laughs> yeah, really. Any more questions? Grateful, you still up in here? TNT, are y'all still up in here? Yeah. Hey, Mary. Hey, best kept secret. Thank you for the gifts. Oh, I appreciate that. Where I'm from. <laughs> in the physical, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah, yes, you're so welcome. So you, did I miss anything, Miss Grateful? I covered everything that you needed to know. Hey, Candy. I covered everything. Hey, Buck. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, but um, I'm in Arizona right now, though, babe. I knew it. Oh, you knew that I was from New Orleans, but the way that I talk. So any questions? Is Mark still up in here? Mark want to talk about something about the blood? Um, 